I need to book a flight today that I've been procrastinating for months. And by the end of this video, you are going to see step-by-step -step how I book my flights and what I do to always ensure that I get the best deal possible. In case you're new here, hi, I'm Christina from happytowander.com. And this channel is all about practical travel tips. So if that sounds like your kind of thing, be sure to like and subscribe for more. Now let's hop on Google Flights and give you a little tutorial in case you've never used it before. So this platform is really easy to use. The first bit is where from. So of course that's gonna be your departure airport. But one really cool feature that Google Flights has is you can actually search multiple departure airports at the same time. So for me personally, my hometown is Vancouver. So that's for sure going to be the main one. But sometimes if there is a good deal, I might fly out of Seattle as well. So you can actually search both of those at the same time by typing in the airport code and then comma. For me personally though, I know this time around, I wanna fly out of Vancouver. So I put that there. Similarly for where to, that's of course your destination. So you can specify the airport if you want to, or you can do city. You can also do broader if you're quite flexible with where you're flying into. So if you want to just search up anywhere, that'll show you all the flights around the world that are gonna be the cheapest for that time period, or you can type in a specific region or country as well. For me though, this time I know that I'm gonna be going to London. I don't care which airport in London, so I'm just gonna put that. And then the departure dates are of course quite self-explanatory. So I'll be leaving around the start of April. So I'm just gonna put that there and then you enter your return date. One thing that I really like about Google Flights is actually when you're looking at your return date, it'll show you the different prices so that you have a rough idea of the cheapest days that you can come back. Now, one thing I'll caution you against though is don't get too excited about the prices that you're seeing here because most of the time the price they're showing you is the cheapest possible option. And most of the time, these are gonna be the flights that have three connections or don't include any bags, etc. So. Don't get too excited when you see these really, really cheap prices here. Now, a very common question that I get is, when is the best time to purchase a plane ticket? The annoying thing is because of something called dynamic pricing, it really just depends on your specific trip. Long story short, the way that plane tickets are priced is very different to most of the things that we're buying in our day-to-day -day lives. So for instance, if you are buying a ticket for the local bus, how much you pay for that ticket is going to depend on where you're going and maybe the time of day, but there's gonna be a price list, you can refer to it, and then you'll know how much you're paying. In contrast, with airlines, the way that they price their tickets, it's changing all the time. So it's changing based on a variety of different factors, including supply and demand, and also competitor pricing, and a bunch of other mysterious factors that they don't really share with the general public. So it's definitely more complicated than just how many tickets they have and how many they've sold, which is why it's not really possible to answer the question of when the best time is to buy a ticket, because it's gonna depend on your exact route. To be honest though, for me personally, most of the time, as soon as I know my dates for sure, I'm more or less gonna be booking the ticket because these days there's not really much incentive for you to be waiting last minute to be booking your flights. There's very rarely last minute deals. And so I personally wouldn't wait, especially when it comes to peak season and also peak holiday periods like Thanksgiving and Christmas, when you know lots of people are gonna be traveling. Now, all that said, even though it's unpredictable, what you can look at are historical trends of your specific route so that you can kind of gauge the timing and see, okay, in the past, have the prices tended to go up or down? There are a few different tools that you can use to look at historical trends. The first is actually Google Flights itself. So I'm gonna show you how to find this feature because it is a little bit hidden. So long story short, you type in your flight and then you press search. And then there's usually going to be a box that shows you, oh, the prices are currently typical or the prices seem low. So here it says the cheapest time to book is usually earlier. So now it's sassing me a little bit. So when you find that box, basically what you do is you click this arrow here and then it's gonna show you the price history. So this is actually based on real data. So you can see in the past few months how much the prices have actually fluctuated. So hopefully that information will give you a bit more guidance as to whether or not you should be booking your flight now or if it's worth waiting it out a little bit longer. You can also search using an app called Hopper. So with Hopper, basically their whole thing is that they have a special algorithm that predicts prices and price drops. So when you search flights through them, they'll tell you, ooh, we actually based on our algorithm think that the prices are gonna be dropping within the next few weeks, or they think that you should be booking now. I think this is really cool. And a lot of people have said that they've had success with Hopper's price prediction models, but again, nothing is guaranteed to be 100% accurate. If you're more risk averse, honestly, as soon as you know your dates, 
maybe just book the flights because at the end of the day, they're probably not gonna drop by such a substantial amount that it justifies you spending all this time tracking the prices. So yes, it is a little bit annoying in that there's no rule of thumb as to the best time to book your tickets. For me personally though, I tend to do my flights maybe two or three months in advance. Now I did get a question about whether it's cheaper to book round trip or one way tickets when it comes to flights. Now the annoying answer to that is it again depends. So generally speaking with long haul flights, it's almost always cheaper to be booking round trip. But in contrast with short haul flights, sometimes you can find really good deals that are just two different one way tickets. So my answer to that is you just have to look at the different options and then do the math and compare the numbers that way, which obviously takes a bit more time, but that's the only way that you can really see what's gonna be cheaper in your specific circumstance, just because it can be very different depending on the routes that you're booking for. Now back to Google Flights, up here you have different options that you can choose from. So whether you're looking for a round trip or a one way or a multi-city, so that's gonna include different flights leaving from different airports and also search the number of passengers, of course, including their ages and also the class that you're flying as well. So I am an economy girl at the moment, so that's gonna be me. And with all those basics done, what you're gonna do now is you're gonna hit that search button. Don't worry though, you can fine tune the results once you get to the next page, which we are on here. So as you can see, there's a lot of different filters that you can use once you get to this search page. So if you're someone who's particularly picky, so let's say you want to make sure it's a non-stop flight or you want to fly with a specific airline, you know what bags you want included, a price range you had in mind, etc. You can handle all those different specifications here. For me personally, I know that I just want to fly nonstop. I don't want to have to stop on this route. And as you can see, doing that really limits the options that I have. And so if you are looking to save time, using those filters can be really, really handy. Now, if you have a bit of flexibility in your dates, one feature that I love that I highly recommend you take advantage of is the date grid. So basically what this is, it's a matrix that shows you all the different prices depending on when you leave. So they're going to show you a cluster of dates kind of around the dates that you picked. And this is gonna be really helpful if your ultimate goal is just finding the cheapest possible ticket. So as you can see, if I left on this day, it would be $1,043, but I could save almost $100 if I just delayed my departure by two days. So they're gonna signal the cheapest ones with this little sparkle here. But one thing that I will caution against is that what they're showing you in terms of price is gonna be the cheapest possible option that they have. So it's gonna be, again, the flights that are maybe less desirable or the most basic tier of service, so you don't have bags included, etc. So just be wary of that. Now, when you find one that you like, you can actually click OK, and that's gonna load up the new results for you. But for me, if I know I'm gonna be leaving on those original dates, just yeah, go back there. But just know that the date grid is really great. There's also something called a price graph as well. It just kind of shows you what the prices would be if you kind of shifted your trip day by day. So for me personally, I don't use this very often because I feel like the date grid just shows you a lot more information. It's just a bit more useful, but just know that that's also an option for you. And if you're doing your research pretty far out, so let's say five to six months in advance or more, then what you could potentially do is start tracking prices. If you're not in a rush to get your tickets right now, you can actually through Google Flights track prices for your specific route and dates by clicking this toggle right here. So if you have a Gmail account, which most of us do these days, then they'll just email you notifications of when the prices change. And if you're not tied to those dates in particular, you can also toggle on this any dates option. And then it's just gonna show you updates for that route in general. For me though, I know I'm probably gonna be booking my flights today or tomorrow, so I'm just gonna turn those off and I won't be tracking. Now, given that I am now down to just two options, essentially what I do at this point is I compare things like the price or the departure time and also the airlines. But you can also click these arrows here and that's gonna show you more information, things like the average leg room or what your carbon emissions are or even the type of plane that you're gonna be on if that's something that you're picky about. So if the flights are more or less similarly priced, et cetera, then I would just go with the airline that you fly with the most often because then you can collect points and most of the time your loyalty will be rewarded. Now, when you think you've made a decision, which I feel like, yeah, I'm gonna go for this one, then you click select flight, and then you can look at the returning flights. Again, only one option in this case, so click that. And then now you're gonna see the different options. So again, as I mentioned before, the price that they show you is strictly for the cheapest possible tier. So it's very important to be 
really looking at the different options here because I think a lot of people take for granted what airlines include, but these days a lot of airlines are cheaping out quite a bit. So they now offer these basic economy tiers, let's say, where your bag's not included, right? So you can't just assume just because before your bag would always be included. That's no longer the case, even with some of these more premium legacy carriers. So make sure you're actually reading the different options to ensure that you're picking something that suits your needs. In fact, a lot of airlines these days even have rock bottom tiers that don't even include a carry-on bag. They only include one of those small personal bags that you can fit under your seat. And I know that sounds crazy, but a lot of airlines these days, they prefer to just give the lowest tier pricing to draw you in. And that doesn't mean that you can bring a carry-on. It just means that you're gonna have to pay extra for that privilege, unfortunately. So after that, I'll choose the tier that I want and press continue. But one thing I will say is that when you look down here, there might be other places you can book that flight that appears a little bit cheaper. So my warning against that is really just that most of the time it makes the most sense to be booking directly with the airline because if anything goes wrong, booking with the airline will ensure that you get the best possible customer service just because there's no middleman, you can deal directly with the airline. So if these other options, these third parties, the prices aren't that significantly different, I would always opt to book directly with the airline. So now with my flight chosen, basically what I'm gonna do, what I always do is I like to take a screenshot in case I wanna look back and reference it later. Now, because I know this is the journey that I'm gonna take, I don't have a ton of flexibility, this is where I would finish my search. I would just press continue and then go through the airline website directly and then book my flight through there. I'm not gonna show you that part because it's different for every single airline, so it kinda wouldn't be that interesting for you to see. But long story short, that is the process that I would use. So conveniently, I'm booking a flight to London, which tends to be a pretty cheap destination to fly into, but that's not always gonna be the case. So sometimes you might be wanting to go to a smaller destination with a smaller airport. In that case, a lot of the time, you might find that it's actually cheaper to fly into another airport, just get onto the continent. If you're doing a Europe trip, fly into the cheapest European airport you can find and then look for a budget airline or someone else to complete that journey. And if you do that, a lot of the time you will save hundreds of dollars. So if that's something that you're open to doing, I will show you a really cool feature on Google Flights that'll allow you to look for these cheaper deals. So first of all, they do have some suggested trips based on cheap fares that they've been able to find, but more helpful is this little button here that says explore destinations. So when you get to this menu, what's really cool is it'll show you flights depending on the search parameters that you enter. So if you're flexible, you can put whether you're looking for a weekend, a week, two weeks, and you can even choose the time frame as well. So you can do like a one week trip in the next six months, whatever your parameters are, and it'll just show you the cheapest possible options for that entire range of time. So let's say, I don't know, I'm doing a one week trip in March. And what you can do is just move it around as you would Google Maps, and then it'll show you all the cheapest possible options within that time frame all around the world. So let's say you know you're going to Europe and you want to find the best possible deal, what you can do is you can zoom in, <laughs> struggling a little bit, zoom into Europe, and then it'll show you the cheapest deals within that time frame. So let's say you can find a cheap flight into Amsterdam. From there, if your end destination was going to be Warsaw, a lot of the time you can find cheap budget flights from Amsterdam to Warsaw, and that'll save you a few hundred dollars compared to you flying directly there or with a layover or whatever. So this is a really fun tool to play with. And I did get a question about which airports are the best to fly into. And generally speaking, the ones that offer the best deals are the ones that are the major international hubs. So London, as I mentioned, tends to be a good one. Dublin can be a great one as well. And they're also the headquarters of Ryanair, which is one of the most notorious budget airlines in Europe. So if you fly into Dublin, you find a good deal there. Odds are you'll be able to find a cheap flight pretty much anywhere else in Europe if you need that connector. So I think that flying into Dublin can often be a really good choice. In addition to that, Paris tends to have really good deals, as does Nice a lot of the time, Rome, etc. So think big cities that have hubs for certain airlines. A lot of the time, those will have much cheaper deals, and from there, you can just continue your journey. So if you have the luxury of flexibility, that's definitely something to look into. I would also recommend looking at flight deal websites. So one that I really like is Secret Flying, which offers global deals. But I would also look into whether or not your local city has a fair deals website or blog that you can follow, because a lot of the time, you're going to find really great deals that depart from your airport. So it's kind of curated for you already. All right, thank you so much for watching. Watching. I hope that was helpful and for more practical travel videos just like this one be sure to like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next week. Bye!